Okay. Hey, hey, how you doing today? Um, Good, how are you? Could you take us through uh, kind of what you're looking at uh, in terms of personnel in the return game? I know you've you've been working. Four guys are there uh, or so there, but uh, do you, you have a better feel for maybe the one or two you're going to be leaning on the most this weekend? Yeah, the guys getting uh, work this week are still JoJo, um, Dearnest, and Donovan. Uh, those three guys are still getting work there. I had both punt return and kickoff return. Uh, Kadero Hodge has gotten some work on punt returns. Uh, Tavier Thomas has been a kickoff returner for before as well. So we're trying to create as much depth there uh, as we possibly can. And then uh, going into the week, that's what we're going to do. The, one of those top three guys will be it. Thanks, Jake. We'll go to Dan Lobby next. Hey, Coach. Um, you mentioned Kadero, and I know he's a guy you used a, in a lot of different roles last year. What is it you like about him? What does he bring to your group? Kadero Hodge brings uh, a toughness that – you know, I've coached receivers on special teams before, and the, the guys that are really good, they, they play like DBs, and, and sometimes receivers don't like to hear that. But, you know, he is he plays fast. He plays physical. He's smart. Uh, I, like I said, he's tough. Everything we believe in on special teams in terms of discipline and, and plays with enthusiasm and passion, um, those are the things I like about Cadero. You know, he, he, he's, he's uh, uh, like I said, mentally tough, physically tough, and he, he plays with great effort. So those are you know, kind of the four words we've talked about before, toughness, effort, discipline, and enthusiasm. That's what he brings to the table. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dan. Next question goes to Nate Ulrich. Hey, Mike. Uh, I was wondering with Cody Parkey on the practice squad, is that really because we're in a pandemic or you want to push Austin Seibert a little bit or all of the above? Probably the uh, pandemic, the uh, COVID rules now, you know, we can't, if something happened to Austin or if he, you know, be, it was positive, um, you know, came back positive, we don't have a chance to bring in a guy and you know, not even work him out, but we certainly can't. If that happened on a Saturday, we can't just sign a guy on a Saturday and play on Sunday with all the, with the testing rules. So with all the different protocols. So what we did is uh, um, obviously Andrew and Kevin and, and our personnel department and coaching department, we, we made the decision that the best thing for us was to bring in a guy uh, that could go out and help us score points if we needed to. Uh, we could bring them up Sunday morning if we needed to, if something happened to Austin. So, and, and it was competition, it obviously uh, makes everybody better, uh, makes coaches better, makes players better. And so it can't hurt that, you know, Cody is a very good kicker as well, that he will push Austin a little bit. But Austin's our guy. He's the guy we believe in. He's the guy that's going to help us win games this year. We firmly believe that. And, and obviously Cody's bounced around and was here before. In mm -hmm. So uh, why was he the guy that, that you guys – targeted, uh, you know, to be, to be the, the guy on the, on the practice squad? Quite honestly, we felt like he was the best guy available that, that was on the street, that was a free agent that wasn't with the team already. And, and he came in here, he had a phenomenal workout uh, probably about three weeks ago. We had the kicker workout. He, he was the best one there. And, you know, Nick Folk did a nice job. Of course, he's with New England now. Um, you know, uh, Kai Forbeck did a nice job, but we felt Cody was the best combination field goal kickoff guy that we could sign that could help us win games if we needed him to. Scott Patrick, you're up. Hey, Mike, when you're thinking about deciding who to go as a kickoff returner, how much do you think about JoJo's, I guess, lack of size in that role? You know, JoJo, and that, and that would be a concern if he was coming out, fresh coming out of college. The thing, he's got some kickoff returns under his belt. And the thing that JoJo does a good job with, he can make you miss. Um, when people need to tackle him, they got to throttle down a little bit sooner than some other returners because he is so quick that they're going to miss him. And hopefully they don't hit him quite as hard that way, number one. Number two, he, he definitely knows how to avoid that contact. He's been doing it a long time. And when you're 150 pounds, you have to learn quick or you're not going to be around very long. Thanks. We'll go back to Jake Trotter. Yeah, Mike, last year, you know, it was pretty obvious that Tavier, Kadero Hodge were, were uh, guys you were going to really lean on, lean on on special teams. Um, are, are there guys uh, this year that maybe weren't big special teams contributors that you feel like could play a big part in, in some of your uh, units? You talking about uh, guys were on the roster last year that aren't could, that could, okay. could be on the roster uh, last year or or new guys either way. Just some some guys you think are really going to help you uh, in special teams, whether they were you know part of the team last year or or, or new new additions. Yeah, um, Stephen Carlson's a guy that comes to mind. I think he's done a nice job. He, he actually contributed a lot last year, and I think the seven or eight games that he played, um, we we're going to rely more on him. Um, Shelter Gredwine is a guy that played for us last year, but he, he started down the stretch or at, down the, at, towards the end of the season. Um, so he was a guy we couldn't use as much down uh, at the end of the year. So he's a guy we're going to lie on a, a lot. Um, Robert Jackson's hopefully a guy that at some point will be on the active roster. We can use him, a guy that's on the practice squad right now. Um, 
Jernis Johnson did a great job for us last year. He's because he's not a rookie anymore. We're going to expect more from him. But the guys that played for us last year, a lot of special teams reps that didn't have a lot of experience coming into last year that were younger players. Those are the type of guys that are going to be more leaders on special teams because we've talked about that before. Those are the guys, you know, the second, third year players that are really going to provide that leadership for the younger guys to help us get better. Nick Shook, you're up. Hey, Coach. Um, obviously, you're, you're focused on the road ahead in 2020 and starting with Sunday, but as one of the few who was on staff last year and stuck around, um, what differences have you seen uh, between last year's team and this team at this point of the year? Well, I think it's way too early, Nick, to tell. Um, you know, last year we had higher expectations coming out, and I think that was more media-driven. Um, this year, maybe not as much, but we expect to be good. You know, we expect to go out there and play hard. Uh, we expect on special teams to to uh, score or set up scores in the return game, to give our defense great field position in the, in the coverage phases, score when we need to on field goal and, you know, force or, or block a kick on, 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 you know, punt return, punt block, field goal block. You know, as far as special teams are concerned, I think we should be better. I thought we did some good things in the coverage phases last year. We need to be better in the return game, which is why, you know, JoJo's here and hopefully we'll block better than we did a year ago. We still got to play penalty free. We can't, we can't, uh, you know, we got to be more disciplined than we were at certain times last year. So, you know, we have a ways to go on special teams. And that's that's the way I look at it, to be quite honest with you, Nick. Um, it is too hard to tell right now as a team. But I like our team. I like our guys. I think we got a good group. we got a good locker room. And, and we got a good coaching staff. And let's go win a bunch of games, we hope. And from your perspective, after being back for a year, um, how are you feeling going into your second season? I'm a little bummed out. I can't go to any Cleveland Indians games. Um, other than that, um, I feel pretty good. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Nick. We'll go to Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, hey, Coach. Just just wondering, with um, with Odell and Jarvis both coming off of surgeries, will you have an opportunity to use them in a pinch if you want to here or there on returns? And is Kevin open to doing that sort of thing? I think if they're 100% healthy, it's something that I think Coach would be – he could consider. But at the end of the day, right now, I would say they're an emergency guys that could go out and do it without – they don't need a lot of work. They've, they're so talented at catching punts and kickoffs and mainly punts. But uh, I wouldn't hesitate to put Jarvis out there to help us win a game if we needed him. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Patrick, back to you. Hey, Mike, is, is there more anxiety heading into the opener this year because – of the lack of live reps throughout, you know, no preseason and really didn't do much tackling? Yeah, I think a little bit. I mean, that's a good question. I think if you really look back at it, though, before we opened up last year against Tennessee, I had a rookie punter and a rookie kicker. And talk about anxiety. I don't think I slept much that week. Um, you know, we're playing a really good Baltimore team. And I think because they're so good on special teams, they're so well coached. Coach Harbaugh's done a great job with no matter who their coordinator is. I mean, Chris does a great job as a coordinator there, just like Jerry did before him. They're very, very well coached. They're disciplined. They play hard. So that provides a lot of anxiety. And, and on top of which, obviously, we haven't, we haven't tackled. We didn't see any live reps in, in any preseason games. But everybody, all 32 teams are like that. So obviously, there would be no excuses there. We just got to go out and execute. And does it, because you play the Ravens twice a year, does it feel like there's less mystery having not seen them at all do any preseason games this year? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they probably for us too, because they played us twice, uh, uh, play us twice a year. You know, I've been studying Baltimore since the spring. I mean, the, the, the three uh, divisional opponents that we have, Baltimore, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, I've studied them hard all, all offseason, all summer. I'm sure they've done the same for us and for the other divisional teams. So, you know, is there mystery? No, we just got to go out and play hard, play tough. We got to take away uh, their punt fakes, their punters, six for six in his career on fake punts. Um, you know, the, the uh, fullback 41, the fullback on the punt team, first protector, uh, Levine, he's done a great job of, of running fakes as well. So our, our task is to stop the fakes, stop what they do well. Uh, they got the best kicker in the game and Justin Tucker. Uh, so we got to tr try to provide as much pressure on him on field goal block as we can. Uh, so we have a work cut out for us like we do every week in this league. You know, they're, they're an outstanding group. They got guys that play hard. And, um, you know, LJ 40 starting on defense, but he's still going to be playing on special teams, I'm sure, at some point. And whoever they have backing him up on teams will probably play just as hard as him. So, you know, that's the anxiety that I, that I have and that I've had the last couple of weeks and we'll have the rest of this week. Thanks. Last question goes to Daryl Ryder. Hey, Mike. Um, obviously, you and Kevin have history. You go back a little ways. Um, this might be the worst year to be a first-year head coach. Uh, he talked about how he's leaned on you a little extra. 
uh, throughout this year. Could you just touch on, from your perspective, what you've done to help him navigate uniqueness and the difficulties that this year has presented and, you know, him having his first opportunity to run his own uh, football team? Yeah, I think more than anything, it's just a sounding board. You know, he'll have ideas about everything that we've gone through. And, and you know, myself and Coach Callahan and Coach Van Pelt and Coach Woods and, and other guys on the staff that have been around a while, um, I think we've all done a nice job of, of being a sounding board for him, providing ideas when he needs them. And uh, if he's got ideas that, that he just wants to throw at us, that uh, what we think and what our opinion is. And I think as a staff, we've done a nice job of supporting him. We'll continue to do so. And, and is, it a, is it a tough year? Absolutely. Has he done a good job? Absolutely. So now we got to go out and, and uh, perform on Sundays.